the gods did not look favorably on the Homer Action Figure Company. It had quality control problems, a restless workforce, and was in the midst of a brutal, hostile takeover bid. But the biggest threat of all came from within, an insidious scourge called workplace harassment. But there was one employee whom destiny chose to vanquish this foe, Hercules. Nice skirt, Hercules. Ow. Really shows off your legs. Here's the layout you asked for. I'd check the colors if I were you. Is that a new skirt you're wearing? Hercules! What is it now? I think your skirt's hot. <laughs> I'm sick and tired of everyone harassing me. I'm going over to HR and take care of this. Not later. Right this minute. By the gods, there must be some rules against harassment in the workplace. Indeed there were, so Hercules and his two assistants, Pete and Susie, went downstairs to Human Resources to see what recourse he had. It's wise that you have come here, Hercules. You should know that harassment doesn't just have to be of a sexual nature. Unlawful workplace harassment is any unwelcome or unsolicited speech or conduct based on race, sex, religion, national origin, age, disability, veteran status, or in some jurisdictions, sexual orientation, marital status, political affiliation, citizenship status, or personal appearance that creates a hostile work environment. I always thought a hostile work environment was like when Johnson threw those IT people off the company gates. It's more subtle than that. A hostile work environment is one that a reasonable person would find hostile or abusive. It is determined by looking at all of the circumstances, including the frequency of the alleged harassing conduct, its severity and pervasiveness, whether it's physically threatening or humiliating, and whether it unreasonably interferes with an employee's work performance. My brain is spinning. I had no idea it was this complicated. You did the right thing by coming here, Hercules. Employers are responsible for providing a harassment-free workplace. Can you imagine the lost productivity that harassment is responsible for? I have an idea. I'll go on a super quest, and I will eradicate workplace harassment. By the gods, I swear I will be victorious! Hercules knew that his quest was righteous, so he used his frequent sailor miles to visit the company's outlying departments. In a company like Homer Action Figures, there was no lack of opportunities for Hercules to flex his muscle-bound wisdom. What is it? We've been at sea for 10 days, and you've yet to pay tribute to Mr. Shippy, god of boats. I can really appreciate where you're coming from, but you must understand, we're just not into the whole Greek god Zeus and Neptune scene. You'll be happier if you be like us and worship the gods we do. Neptune and Zeus love all of us. Wait, Largo, what do you say? No, we have to make them prove themselves to Mr. Shippy first. His love is boundless, but they must know that duplicity will kill them. What is this? What's the matter with you? Let go of me. No! Listen now, all of you must stop harassing. We must take a stand. And that means we can't pressure others about religious beliefs or make them uncomfortable if their gods are different than ours. The Supreme Court tells us that harassment occurs when the workplace is permeated with harassing or abusive conduct, which is so severe or pervasive that it interferes with one's ability to do his or her job. That is exactly what you have been doing. So knock it off and get back to work. Meanwhile, harassment of another kind was taking place in the injection molding plant. You Corinthians are hard to figure. Perhaps the stories are true that olive eaters have poor eyesight. Didn't you know? We've all had laser eye surgery. Still, those seams look really rough, and the finish looks absolutely mummy-esque. Maybe we should put out a special olive eater line. If you say so, you're the manager. I tell you, she's harassing them. Tell me how. Oh, it's totally pathetic to watch, but she's making fun of their being Corinthian. If that's not a hostile work environment, then I don't know what is. Show me.
We're falling behind. We must add a shift because Hasbro is requesting two million more gladiator figures. But where do we find the workers? Hire some more olive eaters. Is that any way to talk about your employees, Jane? <gasps> Everyone knows it's only a joke. A hostile work environment is no joke. Our company policy prohibits any racial or ethnic slurs, whether in the form of jokes, jest, or otherwise. I thought there was a little thing called freedom of speech. What happened to my rights? The First Amendment is overridden by a person's right to work in an environment free from discrimination. Very well, Hercules. Hercules knew that Jane's racial slurs could easily qualify as harassment. They were unwelcomed by the Corinthians, and the Corinthians were indeed uncomfortable. She calls me an olive eater. One more time, I'm out of here. Two conditions that must exist in order to prove a hostile work environment. But as he continued his super quest, Hercules wrestled with the subjective nature of defining workplace harassment. What is severe and pervasive enough? Who is reasonable and who is not? Hello there. Still working for Hercules, I see? And I'm going to stay working for him. Tell you what, I'll double your salary if you play ball with me. Who determines what is harassment? Vaguely worded barometers like pervasiveness, severity, what is hostile, are open to each person's own subjective interpretation. Like Odysseus said, obscenity, like beauty, is often in the eye of the beholder. True. So often it is fact finders and the judicial system who decide what constitutes harassment. But before it gets to that stage, if an employee is unsure whether or not conduct towards a co-worker will be unwelcome, the best advice I can give is to avoid such conduct. I must ask about your own harassment policy in this division. My dear Hercules, I can assure you, we have very few problems here in the accounting department. Well, I say that harassment's more prevalent. This man's being harassed because he wears one sandal. Hercules was right again. He knew that harassment in the workplace on the grounds of lifestyle can include personal appearance and sexual orientation. The one-sandaled man had taken the first step, but Hercules knew that harassment cannot be proved unless an objective, reasonable third party agrees with the plaintiff that the work environment is hostile and uncomfortable. Only time would tell. What about gender-based harassment? I've seen it with my own eyes. Our mascots are called man-eating tigers. These gender-biased titles are discriminatory. I wish you'd just go to the tiger pen and see for yourself the atmosphere they create. Some courts have ruled that signs and labels such as man-eating tiger, men at work, foreman, draftsman, help perpetuate a discriminatory work environment in which women are made to feel unequal to men. Hercules would right that wrong. But first, he had to make sure that the company mascot didn't turn him into a low-fat Happy Meal. The people-eating tiger was toast. But at that very moment, in another department, Jenkins was once again taking advantage of his position as a supervisor. <laughs> but it's easy to see the way. First, we take the day off, then take my chariot out to my seaside pad. Come back the next day, and I put you in for a big, fat raise. It's a win-win situation that will help both of us. I'd rather picnic in Pompeii. I can double your salary. I wouldn't brag about that. As long as I can get by, I choose to ignore you. Then I prefer to act now. By the gods! You already know my feelings. Quid pro quo sexual harassment is when a supervisor conditions granting of economic benefit upon receipt of sexual favors. Meanwhile, Hercules was learning that sexual harassment knows no particular gender affiliations or requirements. He wants you to design an ad for the new fall line, something sexy that will jump out from the page. Well, if it's sexy that he wants, 
Why not feature you, Hercules? You're the hunkiest chunk of meat in this company. <laughs> Just kidding. Ah, don't you look nice. Too bad I'm saying goodbye. <laughs> Earth to Hercules, that man is sexually harassing you. Did you ever see a guy so obsessed with muscles? And the way he winked at you at the end, do you believe that? Your friends are quite right. Go see Jasmine in HR. She knows just what to do. Oh, I have a headache. Hercules knew that in most cases, a single incident or isolated events do not usually constitute workplace harassment. Rather, a finding of a hostile work environment requires multiple offensive acts or a pattern of offensive behavior. I'm tired of people sexually harassing me just because my bod's so exquisitely toned and sculpted. I can't concentrate. I can't do my work anymore. It is not you who is to blame, Hercules. Our company's policy on sexual harassment defines it as verbal abuse or threats, unwelcome remarks or jokes, displaying pornographic or other offensive pictures, unwelcome invitations or requests, leering or other gestures, unnecessary physical contact, such as touching, patting, pinching, and of course, physical assault. But people are always kidding around sexually. How do we tell Johnson to stop when it goes on all the time in varying degrees? It's true that what one person finds offensive, another person may ignore or even condone. This fluid definition of what constitutes sexual harassment mandates that everyone in the company use common sense in what they say and do. If conduct might be construed as harassing, then it has no place at work. What about emails? Every day I'm getting these ridiculous little notes. Loved your tush this morning. I want to lick your biceps. Do you like pina coladas? In this day and age, email is often the medium of choice for harassment. If someone sends you a harassing email, delete it and ask them to stop. Thank you, Jasmine, for enlightening me. I'll file the report now and start the paperwork. Shouldn't take very long. If you had more brains, you'd get out of this rain. Now I'll have my dignity back, and my name cleared, and sushi tomorrow for lunch! Near the end of their quest, Hercules and his team reflected on everything they had learned. So why don't we just break it down, team? We can tell him all about it. Harassment is any behavior that demeans, humiliates, or embarrasses people. It includes actions, comments, or displays. Avoiding harassment is basically common sense. If you have any doubts about a comment or action being appropriate, then don't say or do it. Is that a new skirt you're wearing? To determine if conduct is indeed harassment, courts analyze and weigh, how bad is it? Is it severe and pervasive? How often does it occur? Is it multiple offensive acts or a pattern of offensive behavior? Is the offensive behavior unwelcome? I'm sick and tired of everyone harassing me. Is the person complaining uncomfortable? Would an objective, reasonable third party agree the situation is uncomfortable? And finally, does it interfere with one's ability to perform the duties of the job? If all of these conditions are met, then you may have a legitimate case of a hostile work environment. Bozos. Accountants from our rival. They want a war. They thrive on red ink. But isn't there something we can do? Let's go a little faster. I'll show them. The hostile takeover fight for Homer action figures had reached a critical point, and Hercules rushed to join the battle. Demigod, friend, great dresser, and faithful employee. Hercules fights with not only his muscles, but also his brain and heart. How will Hercules inspire you to identify and fight harassment in your own workplace?